Let's begin. Today's daf is daf uh, ches and uh, number eight, and we're lear- we're learning an interesting topic today, and it's a it's an agadita topic, uh, not agadita, but it's a very familiar topic. Tanur Rabbanan, two lines from the bottom, Zayin Amid Beis, Mevorchim Birches Chasanim Ba'asara. You know those Shevi Brachas. Um, actually, there are six Brachas. The first one is Bayre Pri Agafin, and then the rest are Shevi Brachas that you branch under the Chupa. You branch every day of the seven days after the wedding. You bring Shevi Brachas. Says the Gemara, you you have to have ten people there, and it's called Shiva for seven days, right? Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda said. When do you make uh, Sheva Brachas on the rest of the days after the wedding? You have to have a brand new face there. So what does it mean, a brand new face? Somebody who wasn't there at, Rashi says, somebody who wasn't there the day before. In other words, he may have been at, at Sheva Brachas number one, and he shows up again at Sheva Brachas number five. He's considered a, a Panim Chadashos, a brand new face. The idea of having a brand new person at the Sheva Brachas is so that the, the Chosen and Kala should be happy. Oh, you came for me. You know, so that uh, there's a flutter of joy when they see uh, new people, new faces coming, and it makes them feel good. And then that, that calls for the celebration and calls for making new blessings, the blessings the, of the Sheva Brachas. I just point out to you that some we generally we try to get somebody who wasn't even at the wedding or somebody who was uh not at the chuppah and then that considered upon him uh shave ruchas is very very hard to uh put together and get somebody brand new uh to want to come and celebrate so the gemara asks a question my mavarach what are the shave ruchas what are the six brachas shave the first one again is bayre priya gafan amr avihuda avihuda said the first one is Baruch Ato Hashem Alekenu Melech Olam. Let's go to Daf Ches. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Let me let me move the page. Okay. Now I'm Daf Ches. Daf Ches of an Aleph on top. We, the first bracha is Baruch Ato Hashem Alekenu Melech Olam. Shahakol Baruch Chloidei. Here is a blessing that you make a bracha, that God created everything, every creature, everything that's in creation shows the honor of God. You can really see the, the chachma and the science and the intelligence behind the design of everything. So that is the first bracha we make. And uh, that has to do with um, uh, the, the slowly we get up to the creation of man, the creation of man and woman and, and happiness of a wedding. So the first bracha is hakol baro lechvayde. Then the next bracha is baruch atah Hashem elkeinu melech olam yotzer haadam. God created man, right? Originally, God only created man, and then uh, He created woman. So the first uh, the, that's the next bracha. Then we we make a third bracha regarding the creation of woman. The third bracha is Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam Va'asher Yatsar Es Ha'Adam B'Tzalmoi. God created man with his uh, form. B'Tzalem Dumus Tam Vinisoi. That means the soul. Really, God doesn't have a form, but our soul somehow resembles God. That you should know. It comes from God, and it has a piece of God in that soul that you have. B'Tzalem Dumus Tam Vinisoi. God created man in a form. According to his, uh, according to his likeness, according to the, uh, the the shape that God put him together, so that's man. But the hiskin many God built, or 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 built from man. Either he took his tail, or or a rib, or something like that, and he created binyan adiyad, another building, which is the woman. And adiyad, this is forever. That from now on, there's man, male, and female. Baruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you, uh, God, Yetzer Adam, who, who created and formed man, humankind. Now, the next bracha is a blessing. Um, first of all, before we bless the Chas and Kala, you always have to talk about uh, that we don't have a base in Migdash and Jerusalem is destroyed. So we say, Sois Tosis V'Sogel Ha'akara, bring joy and, and jubilation to the barren one. That means Jerusalem and the place of the base of Migdash, 
the kibbutz bonel l'soicha, when you gather her children inside of it, b'simcha with happiness, baruch ato Hashem, m'sameach tzion b'veneho, who's going to be, bring happiness to Zion, which is the base of Migdash, with its children. We're coming back. So that's the, that is the, uh, uh, that is the fourth bracha. Okay. Uh, actually, it's the fifth bracha after Baripriya Gafin. So that is, we talk about Jerusalem. Always Jerusalem gets uh, before we talk about our own happiness. Now we're making a bracha, Sameach Tam Samach is a blessing that God should make happy the Chosen Kala. Sameach Tasamach Reim Ho Ahuvim. God should make happy these friends, these loving friends. Just like just like God made Adam and Chava happy in Gan Eden. In other words, when God created Chava, God had to make Adam happy with Chava. So he beautified Chava, prepared her here, like the Medrash says. It wasn't just like he created Chava and walked away. He was actually the, the best man. And he was also the one dancing away at the at the wedding of Adam and Chava. So God should do that to this chosen and Kala. Baruch Ato Hashem, Mesameach Chosen Bekala. God brings happiness to a chosen and Kala. Every time there's a chosen and Kala and they're happy with each other, God create God is the one that that brought about that happiness. Then we finally make the the final bracha, Baruch Ato Hashem, Alekenu Melech Olam, Asher that God. We thank God that. Bara Sasain, he created uh, gladness, Vesimcha, and joy. Chosan, he created Chosan and Kala. Gila, uh, Gila, which is uh, another exaltation, jubilation, Rina, singing out loud, Disa, happiness, Chedva, uh, uh, Chedva is, uh, is uh, uh, extreme joy, Aha, oh, uh, despite sadness. We, we you have to know what these words uh, they're synonyms, uh, but they mean different things regarding being happy. Ahava, God created love. Ba'achva, brothers, brotherness, v'shalom, peace, v'reyos, and friendship. Mehera, now we say mehera Hashem alekenu may quick, quickly be heard. Yishama ba'ari Yehuda v'chutzis Yerushalayim. Let it be heard in the cities of Yehuda and the and the and the courtyards of Jerusalem. We should hear it once again, kol sosin, kol simcha, a, koil, a, a sound of joy and a sound of, of gladness, kol chosin, kol kala, the sound of a chosin, and the, and the voice of a kala, kol mitzalas chasanim michu pasam, the sound of dancing chasanim, who's like, uh, like, you know, jumping for joy, coming from his chupa, una arim, and young young uh, young people from uh, from a party that had song. Baruch Hashem, bless you Hashem. who brings who brings happiness to the chosen together with with his kala. Uh, so uh, if you notice, that it says the word coil five times here. Coil, 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 coil. Um, the Torah also we say the it was given with. Um, with five times God used the word koil when the Torah was given. So it's Marama is also that we're married to God and 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 God uh, brings happiness to the Chosan and Kala. And we hope that uh, along with the happiness of the Chosan and Kala, the ultimate happiness will happen when God will bring back the, our base of and return us to our land. Okay, so those are the six brachas that we make. Levi, the Gemara begins, Levi, Ikla, Lebe. Rebbe Bihilula, the Reb Shimon Bere. Levi was uh, a guest at the house of Rebbe, and Rebbe was making a wedding for the Reb Shimon Bere, Reb Shimon his son. Berich Chamesh, he only blessed five brachas. Oh, so he left out Yoytzer Adam, right? Rav Asi Ikla Lebe Rav Ashi. Rav Asi was a guest in the house of Rav Ashi. Bihilula de Mar Bere in the in the in the wedding of Mar his son. And Ravasi brich sheikhs. Ravasi blessed six brachas. So there was a machlekis whether you should make that first bracha of Yaitzar Adam. So the Gemara asked, Leima Bahokami Palgi. Maybe this is the argument. Why should one drop Yaitzar Adam? The answer is because maybe Yaitzar Adam implies what? That God created only man. But guess what? That itself is a machlekis because we learned that there's an opinion that holds when God created man, he actually created man and woman together. Just they were glued together like Siamese twins. 
men for the front or, and the woman in the back. Or the, it depends how they walk. So therefore, you can't make a bracha yoytzer ha'adam. And therefore, uh, yoytzer ha'adam, uh, because that implies God only created man. At, there was a time that man was only created, not woman. So the marsav achad the the one that holds Levi held that he only he didn't he dropped Yitzhar Adam because there was one creation. Man and woman were created at one time, so you can't make a brach of Yitzhar Adam. Umar Savar, but Rav Asi held Shte There were two points of creation. One God created man alone by himself, no chava, and then from his rib, God created woman. So that's why you according to Ravasi, you could make that bracha of Yitzhar Adam which implies the time that man was created all by himself, there was no women around. So it says the Gemara no, the Kuli Alma Chadi Tzirahava. Everybody could hold that woman and man was created at the same time. And, and, and therefore, there was one type of creation. It just God made an operation uh, uh, to separate the Siamese twins. So why, do you, why did one make a bracha of Yitzhar Adam and not, and the other did not? Masava of Asi, who said that you made a Yitzhar Adam because God originally thought to create man by himself. Therefore, on the original thought, it's hard to understand this, but there was an original thought that God said, oh, I'll just create man by himself. For that thought alone, we make a bracha yaitzer adam. In the end, God didn't do that. It was just a pre-thought. And then God decided to create man and woman at the same time. Umar Sava, but the other hold, no. Basa, Masa, Azlizim. We have to look at what God actually did. What God actually did was he created uh, man and woman at the same time. So therefore, you can drop the Yoytzer Adam. And that's why Levi held you drop Yoytzer Adam. How do you know God had a three thought? And the Kihad Rabbi Yehuda Rami. Rabbi Yehuda asked a contradiction in Psukim, in Parshas Bereshis. One Pasuk says, Vayivra Elikim es ha'adam b'tzalmoi. God created man according to his image, according to his form. Uksiv, so it says God created only man. Uksiv, and then another Pasuk says, Zohar unikeva baram. God created male and female at the same time. Hokate said, how do you resolve these two Psukim? Batchila ola b'machshava libroi shnaim. God uh, wanted to create two separate creations. First, man, and then delay it, and then create woman. In the end, Nivra Echo, they were created both at the same time, connected to each other like Siamese twins. So that's, uh, that ends that discussion about the brocha of Yitzhara Adam. Says the Gemara, Rav Ashi Ikla Lebei Rav Kahana. Rav Ashi was a guest at the house of Rav Kahana, and I guess they, uh, uh, they were having a wedding. Uh, Rav Kahana was having a wedding in his house. So Ravashi is the guest. And he is the, you know, the great rabbi who came to participate in the wedding. Yoy Mekama, the first day of the wedding, Baruch Kulei. They made all the Sheva Brachas. Mikan Ve'elech, but the rest of the days after the wedding day, I'ika Ponem Kadoshos, Baruch Kulei. If he found there was a brand new face to join the party, he made all the shaver brachas. Ve'iloi, and if he, there was no panam chadashes, let's say it's a, it was a small town and, they, and nobody, there was no brand new face for the other, you know, the meals that they had after the wedding. So apushe simcha be'almahu. So then it was just an extension of the original simcha. So they did not make shaver brachas. So. They made mevorach shah simcha bim oinoi. They made, when they made the zimon, right, they say mevorach shah simcha bim oinoi. A simcha bim oinoi is, you know, a special addition that you add by the zimon, only by a wedding and a sheva brachas. And when we say that the ultimate happiness is with God, bim oinoi means in the heavens. It's another nickname for heaven is called ma'oinoi. And we say, Shah the real true joy is Mo'oinoi, is the ultimate heavens. Because at the end of the day, you know, we can't have uh, an eternal joy in this world because we're not here forever. So we say, Shah or we say the source of our Simcha comes from, from heaven. You know, a person thinks that you could work on happiness, but you need God to plant happiness in your, in your heart and head. So therefore, we, 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 we source the, the happiness 
with heaven. So you say hasimcha b'mayne v'asha bara, but you don't make sheva brachas. But what the Gemara just said is that you do make one of the sheva brachas, which is asher bara. The shiva ba'at shloishim. Let's say after the seven days of celebration, till the thirty days. So then, if even if the chos and college just have a meal, let's say they have a wedding and they say, it's because, you know, we're just celebrating our wedding. It's like, you know, 14 days after the wedding day. And they say, let's have a, let's go out to eat and let's call it like we're celebrating the wedding. doesn't matter if they said or not. When they make zimun, they say the word shahasimcha bim oinoi. After 30 days after the wedding. So if the eating, if they're going out to eat or eating a nice supper, if they say, we're still celebrating our wedding, they say, but if they're not dedicating this meal as a celebration of the original wedding, then you don't say, now, how long could a person celebrate his wedding? You know, uh, 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 years after he's married? If, if he says, I'm celebrating this meal in a celebration of my wedding, how long after the wedding could you still say, until 12 months of the year? So that's till the 12 months of the year. You could always say, So, Ooh, so now the Gemara continues. Now, by the way, if you think these Shilas don't come up, the whole COVID was, uh, was uh, one, of, one of these questions where people had weddings. They barely had a minion at the wedding. Sheva brachas they did not have uh, uh, or, or they couldn't have Sheva brachas because uh, they didn't have Panam Chadashas or they didn't even have a minion. Uh, nevertheless, maybe according to the Al Gemara, you still say the Ashabara bracha. And uh, even if you just have three people there, and uh, you could still say because it's part of the wedding celebration. Now the Gemara asks a question. How long, let's say before the wedding, can you say In other words, uh, in those days, they used to get an engagement when they made the Kedushin. And let's say 10 months later, they had the Chuppah, the wedding. So during the... Can you even before the wedding start saying sasimcha b'moinay? In other words, can you? In, there's a joy in pre preparing for the wedding. You know, you already can start the celebration early. So can can the, how long before? Amar Papa, Papa said me remi sare by sintha. When you start pouring the barley into the water, you're trying to prepare making beer for the wedding day. Already you're feeling the simcha of the wedding. You could start, you could also say, Interesting. Amy, so the Gemara says, Rapapa, Rapapa himself, this not so. He was busy with Abba Mar, his son, to make the wedding. And already months before, by the Arison, he was saying, uh, He was already by the engagement party saying, Answers the Gemara, Sha'ani Rapapa, Rapapa was different, the Avatarach lay, because he already started to prepare for the wedding very, very early. From even as soon as the son got engaged, he already had, you know, the food, the caterer paid up uh, for the wedding. And therefore, he, he felt the simcha already early on. And therefore, he said, Sha'asimcha ba'oina, even by the Arison, by the Kedusha. The Gemara continues, Ravana, this is, a, this is an interesting piece. Ravina was busy. He, he got his son engaged to a daughter from the household of Rav Chaviva. And he was very excited of the Shidduch. So Ravina Ubrich Mishas Erison. He already started feeling that the wedding is happening already. And he was already saying, uh, even right after the engagement. During the engagement, already he was feeling the wedding all through the engagement. Omar, he said, Kim li bigavai deloy hadru buhu. I'm sure that this, this uh, I'm guaranteeing myself that this will not be a broken engagement. This is going to go through to the wedding. So that's why he felt joy and he could say, Masha simcha babainai. 
But the Gemara says not so. Lo Yistaya Milsa, he did not have Siata Dishmaya. Bahadru Bohu, and the wedding broke, the, the girl and the boy broke the Shirach. So, Rav Tachlifa Bar Marava, Ikli Lebaba. Rav Tachlifa Bar, the son of Marava, was in Baba. Berich Shis Arich say, he started making more brachas. He extended the bracha of Yaitzer Adam, and he would extend it a little bit to make a, a, another baruch after that bracha, like Kiddush. He, he made it all long brachas. The halacha is not like him. You have, you have to follow the sheva brachas that's written in the Siddur. Rav Chaviva Iklil Bey Mehullah. Here, Rav Chaviva was at a bris. So, Brich Shasimcha B'Mo'ine. He also wanted to say during benching, Shasimcha B'Mo'ine, that the happiness is in really in heaven because he really felt joyful by the bris. But we don't feel joyful by a bris. So, we don't make that bracha. Why? Because we're very disturbed and, and anxious because at the end of the day, there is the, the child, the baby is in pain. And therefore, it's, it's not a full joy like a wedding day. When a person experiences the wedding of a son or a daughter, it's a very special time. And there's a, such a joy in one heart, one, one, one person's heart, that only then can you say, that I'm feeling the joy and I'm thanking God that you're the source of my joy. Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav. Rav Nachman said in the Narein Marav, when you have a, when you're supposed to say the Sheva Brachas, Chasanim Min HaMinyu, you count the Chasan, he's part of the 10. So you don't have to get 11 people, but the Chasan himself can be counted. Bein Abela Min HaMinyu, but you, an Abel Avel is not counted in the Minyan. Of what? So we'll see in a moment. Mesvei, First, the Gemara asks a question. You count the chasen and the oval that could be part of the minion for whatever the oval is supposed to do, for whatever the chasen you're supposed to do. So the Gemara says, so this is a question against Rav. Answers the Gemara. You're asking from a Bryce against Rav. Rav Tana Uhu Upalik. Rav is a Tana, and he could argue. Rav holds that the oval, what, 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 what process, what what, what um, Whatever we're doing for the uh, for the oval, the oval is not counted for the minion. Okay, itmar Omar Rabbi Yitzchak Omar Rabbi Yochan Chasanim min haminion. Again, the last line of the page of Zayin Amaral of Chasim Amaral Chasanim min haminion. The chosin is counted from the minion of Sheva Brachas. The ain avela min haminion, but you don't count an oval as part of the minion for the for. Whatever we're going to do with the oval, the oval is not counted as part of the minion. Again, we didn't explain what we're doing with an oval, but we'll explain it in a minute. So this says the oval is not from the minion. And Rabbi Yochanan is an Amora. Meisve, the Gemara asks a question. The Brisa says, Chasan ve'avela min minion. The oval and the and the chasan are counted as part of the minion. So how how can Rabbi Yochanan argue? Okay, so now we go to Ches Amir Beis. Ki tanya hi. When was that said? That you can you can you can count an oval bebirches hamazon. He could be included in the zimon. Ki kamer Rabbi Yochanan in Beshura. When Rabbi Yochanan said that an oval is not counted in Beshura. Remember, Loyalenu, uh, if you ever buy a levaya, if a person's an oval, the oval like sits. Uh, uh, they, they form two rows, and the oval walks right after the burial. He walks through those people, and they say hamokim yenachem eschem shoshev etzim shloim. So you need 10 people to do that, uh, per, uh, to, to, to do that. And the oval is not counted as part of that meaning. You need 10 people saying Hamokim and Achamaschem to the oval as he walks through the people. So the Gemara says, but that doesn't answer everything. You make the Sheva Brachas with 10 people. The Chasan and Minyan, Minyan, the Chasan is from the Minyan. Ubirkas Avelin, the blessings that you do for an oval, the Asara, with 10 people, the Ain Avela Min Hamin, and oval is not part of that 10 people. So apparently, there's something you never knew about, which is that they used to make an oval, people would come and make a big bracha to an oval like they do by Sheva Brachas. So the Gemara says that's what it means. The oval is not counted from that part of the minion. So it's not talking about where people are coming to Menachem Oval, because Gemara asks, bracha b'shura mi'ika, do they make a bracha when, when they're lined up in rows and the, and the Oval walks through and they say, Amokim Menachem Eschem? 
So Ella ki kamarabia in the bracha that they made by the street. In other words, right after the right after they buried, they left the cemetery. They would bring the ovo to the big middle of the street to give him his first meal after after burying his relative, and during that meal, they would make four blessings to the ovo, and so that. Blessings is almost like a Sheva Brachas, and the Gemara is going to give you the Nusach of the of that blessing, and uh, that blessing the Avol is not counted from the minion. So the Gemara asks a question. The Gemara just asked, this Bryce in this Rabbi Yechenin said that Birkes Avelim is done with 10 people, the Ovals, and, and it's done for seven days. But wait a second, how, how do you do these, these brachas for seven days? It's only done typically right after the guy, the Oval comes out of the cemetery, they bring him to the middle of the, of the street, uh, the middle street, uh, the main street of the, of the town, and they make the brachas once, not for seven days. Answers the Gemara, yes. They used to make the Birchas Avelim if a brand new person came to town to be Menachem Avol, and he would make the Bracha. Mishkachas Lob upon him Chadashois, with a brand new face that came to be Menachem Avol, all of a sudden they would make new Brachas to this Avol. Listen to this story. Again, we don't do Birchas Avelim today. There's no such a thing, but there was a Birchas Avelim Bracha for Avelim. And we'll describe it in a moment. Rabchia Bar Abba was a tutor teaching Chumash to the son of Rosh Lakish. But Amri Law and others say, He taught Mishnayis to the son of Rosh Lakish. Anyway, this Rabchia Bar Abba was a tutor in the house of Rosh Lakish. A, a child was nifter in his house. So Yoimekama like Ozagabe. Rosh Lakish didn't want to visit him on the first day. So he missed the, the whole the whole funeral. Lamachar, the next day, Dabre Le Yehuda Bar Bernachmeni Mutur Gamana. He brought along a Yehuda Barnachmeni is his uh, spokesperson, so to speak, his maturgam. As you know, he there was the rabbi had always an assistant. The rabbi would give a shear and the maturgam would, you know, explain the shear, what the rabbi meant to in a loud voice to the people. So Rosh Lakish, on the second day, after Rabbi Bar Abba lost his kid, lost his son, he came to be Menachem Amol. So first, Amalei, he said like this, Kum, uh, he, he sat down and started being Menachem Amol, and he said, Kum Ema Milsa Kol Kaval Yonuka. Let me tell you something about this tragedy of losing a child. Pasach Omar, and he started to say, God gets the sore and got disgusted from the anger of his children and, and, and daughters. If you have a generation of people being, uh, that repulse, so to speak, God, God gets angry on their sons and daughters, and they die when they're young. So basically, he's trying to say is that when the, the father's sin, then God, uh, so to speak, uh, takes it out on the young children. The Ike de Amre, others say, is Bachar Hava, that, that this wasn't a, 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 a young kid under Bar Mitzvah. He actually was a teenager. Mahachi Kamalei, and this is what Ravashi came to be Menachem Ovo. And the, Al, he's brought a Posik and says, Al Kain Al Bukhuruv Layisma Hashem, Ves Yusayma Ves Almanoisev Lo Yerachem. God was not happy on the young, uh, on the teenagers. And on the on the orphans and the widows, he's not going to have any pity. because everybody's full of flattery, umera, and bad and doing bad things. The whole ped nevola, and there are many mouths that are speaking uh, um, foul language. The whole zois, even after even after being punished, is still speaking in a foul language way. So God will not stop his anger. God will continue to be angry. In other words, you can be a, a, a person who did a virus and then you do tshuva. So fine, you did tshuva on your virus, but you still speak foul language. God cannot have your mouth speaking foul language. Foul language is speaking dirty, basically. This is unbelievable. 
Hakol Yoidin, everybody knows, why a bride goes to, to get married. There's, there's sex. And, but what's the teaching you? He purposely talks about uh, sexual topics in a bad way, even for, even for a joke. So he's menabal is piv, and he does it on purpose. I feel he could turn his muzzle around. He could be a nice person. I feel a nechtem like zardina shashivim shon rotoiva. Even if God promised him 70 years of good things happening to him, nepach all of the raw. He could turn it around to, 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 he could turn it around and, so to speak, um, uh, uh, turn it around and make a bad muzzle of that. So the person has to be careful with his mouth. Now, the Gemara asks the question. What kind of nechama is this? Also, the nechume tzuri kometzarle. He's coming to comfort uh, this rafchia, and he's coming. And now he's causing him more stress. He's saying that the kid died because he, you did averis. So the gemara says, "Hachi kamale choshev atel latvusi adara." You're such a special person that really the generation uh, did the avera, and God takes away, um, punishes the tzaddik, and that you know, so to speak, brings about forgiveness for an entire generation. So he said, that basically, you're a tzaddik. It's just that God needed a kapara for the generation, and therefore you lost your child, and, and you brought about a kapara for the entire generation. And that's a big schus. Amalei Ravashi continued, Kum eimo milsa kenev shivcha shalak pasuk bashi, shalak kodesh baruchu. Let me say something about the praises of God. So this is the brachas. So the, like I said, there are four brachas. Pasach ba'amar. Hakel ha'godol b'roiv godol adir v'chazak b'roiv n'amorois. M'chayim esim b'amaroi v'amamoroi. Oish g'doi z'ayin e'chechem v'neflois z'ayin m'spar. Baruch ha'ta Hashem m'chayim esim. So the first bracha has to do that the God is going to resuscitate the dead. So that is the first bracha. That God does, is, does awesome things and with his word could bring about resuscitation of the dead eventually. Amalei, and then he said, Kum emel milsa keneged avelim. He's going to start, give, now give a bracha to the avelim, that God should bless the, the, the mourners. Pasach va'amar, achene hamu yuga'im hamu dukayim be'evel azeh. Our brothers that are crushed by this uh, event and our mourning, tenu levavken lacha zois. Think about this. Zois yomedus la'ad. This is a fact of life. Nesiv humer sheishish me'abreishis. This is from the time of creation. Rabin Shasu, Rabin Yishtu, Kamishter Rishonin, Kach Mishter Echroinim. That means many people drank and will drink. In other words, many people died, and eventually people die. That's life. Achenu Baal Nechomes Yinachem Asem. May God, our brothers, the one who can comfort you, let them, let him comfort you. God should comfort you. Baruch Menachem Avelam. So basically, saying the way I'm going to comfort you is that's a fact of life. You have to accept that death is part of it, and therefore, um, therefore, God. Sh- God, who is in charge of everything, should bring you comfort. Amar Abaya, Abaya just commented on that bracha. Don't say that, you could say that everybody, many people died. But don't say every uh, people will die. Rabim Shasu, Lema. You could say that many people drank these waters. Lema, you can say. Rabim Yishtu, many people will drink. Loi Lema, don't say. Mr. Rishonim, that the earlier gener- people drank. You could say, Lema. Mr. Achroinim, people will drink loy lemo. Why? You're not allowed to talk about death, basically. You, know, you shouldn't say the word dying. Generally, don't open your mouth to the Satan. So don't talk about death, uh, because that could almost like you know, like like manifest itself. Amar of Yosef, my crow, what's this posik? There's a posik There's a posik that described that we, we saying that we were like Sdoim, and then the posik says you are like Sdoim. Basically, you, when you manifest something, uh, especially something bad, it could come about because that's called opening your mouth for the Satan. Um, a few moment, two more minutes over here. We'll finish to the bottom of the page. Amalei kum emula. So this is the third bracha he said. So this bracha was thanking the people for coming and being menachem oval, this oval. And they're doing a big chesed, taking from their time and being menachem the oval. So therefore, we make a bracha for that person. 
And the final bracha of Avelim is Amalei Kumei Momizgenei Kol Yisrael. This was a bracha. The final bracha was that God should save the Jewish people from all types of plagues and diseases, not only on their bodies, but also, uh, uh, also on their fields and crop. So again, we have four different brachas that they used to make for an Avelim. And it was almost like a Sheva Brachas. But what you do see is that they didn't only make it on the first day. Ravashi came on the second day. He missed the whole funeral and he, he made these Brachas. So we see that sometimes if a new person comes, he can come during the Shiva and he'll make these Brachas. Again, today we don't do them. We'll finish off the Gemara. This is a Brisa. The Gemara says that when somebody loses a relative, asora koises tiknu chachamim bebeis avel, that the the avel should drink ten cups of wine. Okay, in other, you know, put him at ease before they give him the first meal. Shloisha koyda machila. They should give him three cups of wine before the first meal. Kedei liftoich as bnei meav to open to make him, you know, have an appetite. Shloisha besoich achila during the meal. They give him three cups of wine so that he can digest the food better. And then they would make the four blessings of Birchas Avelim by benching. Somehow, corresponding to the benching of four brachas of benching, they would make four brachas of Birchas Avelim that we discussed. Then, many generations, they actually gave 14 cups of, of wine to drink. I see for Alem Arba, they gave the, the, the Ovel another four cups to drink. Kenege Chazani Eir, a blessing to thank the, 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 the Hevra Kadisha to help bury your, your dead. The Echa Kenege Panosa Eir, the one to bless the rich people who help uh, poor people afford funerals. The Echa Kenege the base of Migdash, one was. To celebrate the that a blessing that the base of Migdash should be rebuilt, the Echel Keneged Rabbi Gamliel to thank the Rabbi Gamliel, which we'll discuss in a second. So basically, they used to drink fourteen cups of wine for this Oval. So says the Gemara, Everybody was getting stoned right after you buried your your your, your parents. Uh, you, you were getting stoned. They made a new rule that you know, they, I guess they stopped giving drinks to. Uh, 10 cups, and they stop giving these brichas tabelem, and they just give a little drink. You, uh, I'm told that they're supposed to give a little drink to the ovel during the first meal, so he could to put him at ease. It's a mitzvah. My Rabbi Gamliel, what was so great about Rabbi Gamliel? What's his role? The tiny we learned in a brisa, we had this once before. The expenses of, of, of funerals, it was so much difficult. The, the 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 cost of the funeral was more of a, a more of a stress than the actual death. People would just leave the dead body and not bury it because it was cost so much money. People would do fancy things basically to bury the dead with in a fancy way with fancy clothing. Rav Gamliel, Rav Gamliel himself, who was a great rich person, he he made a, when he died. He made himself light by Tziu Beklish Christian. All he was wearing was just a like a a linen uh, a, a linen pajama. Then Ahago Kolam Achrav. Then everybody followed him. Loitzi Bekli Pishtin. Amar Papa Veidna. Nowadays Neig Alma Afilu Bitzi Rada Barzuza. We could we make we dress up the the dead person with a uh, canvas, some uh, some very cheap cheap material that's only worth a dinner. And that's how we, that's how the expenses of the funeral expenses came down. Rabbi Gamliel was, was knowing very light by himself and everybody, if he can do it, anybody can bury that way. And that was a very big saving of the Jewish people. So the cost of funerals was not so high. So we, and originally we used to make one bracha to thank Rabbi Gamliel for what he did. Again, this is Birchus Avelim, but we discussed Birchus Avelim, Birchus Hasanam. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very Thank good. You. Thank you very much. Have a good Shabbos, bro. Uh, good Shabbos, everybody. Good Shabbos, Relax. No, don't think of Geshef.